This is a literary libation, a bootleg ritual tribute. From a sinner in winter, a wannabe angel in fall. My name is Anthony Johnson, uh, also known as Umtua Swa, my African name, which means natural man also known to friends as AJ. Uh, what really keeps me going is kind of like oxygen in the air. These, I get these hits and I just love what we call poetry or spoken word. Dreaming, facing, falling, boning. Dreaming, falling, facing, boning. A sinner in winter. Dreaming of a place with no race. Hard open eyes with no face. Facing a wall of red stone. Climbing on top of ancestor bone. Boning up on Babel. Masquerading as truth. Full of contempt. I am a sinner in winter. You too. Nobody's exempt. The spoken word and poetry is, for me, is just, uh, again, it's like air. It just breathes. I just, I get a hit. It kind of reminds me of uh, some, po some poets who I respect a lot, who inspire me. And first one comes to mind is Leopold Singor, the first uh, president of Senegal. Can you imagine having a president of your country who is also a poet? Leopold Singor reminds us that, quote, poetry comes from that place where essence exists. Poetry comes from that place where essence exists. And he says, art, all art is animated by the invisible forces that rule the universe. Beautiful words from a president of a country. Another poet who inspires me is Hafez. Hafez says, Hafez defines a poet, and I love his definition. Hafez says, a poet, a poet is someone who can pour light into a cup, then raise it to quench your parched holy mouth. So that's how I approach poetry, or the love that I have for it. What I do is spoken word for the rest of us that speaks to the best in each of us. When I met Anthony Johnson, I, uh, I knew right away I'd like him. So yeah, the first uh, spoken word event, I brought uh, my wife and my daughter and, and my stepson and talked to a whole bunch of people that I knew. And uh, I've always appreciated poetry and, and spoken word. And uh, I remembered it was called Spirit Talk. He began to speak in a, a really beautiful, deep, baritone speaking voice. And yeah, it was velvety, silky, and it just crawled right into my being. Ah, but spring will arrive when winter crumbles, leaving traces of what will come. Things that we thought were so real turn out to be bubble gum. In a rapper dressed oh so dapper, mimicking the original call. Me, I'm just a sinner in winter, a wannabe angel in fall. So one afternoon, I called Anthony and I said, what you doing, man? He said, come up to the house. So I drove up to his house. Now he had a nice house in, um, in Mesa. And he says, I want to hook you up with this, with this poetry CD. I said, what? You published too? And so um, I ended up listening to it. Then making some copies with some friends of mine. They said, who is this guy? And, he, and his poetry was very positive. Yeah, this electromagnetic spectrum poster I've had for many years and it helps to remind me of the vastness of the universe and just how much 
we don't know and how much I don't know. I mean, all the way from radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma. And the fascinating piece for me is just this small little slice right here. We've been able to identify as visible light. That's where we live. That's what we're able to actually see. You know, some of us believe seeing is believing. <laughs> some of us believe that what we don't see is just as real as that which we see. So this speaks to that for me. Of course, this is how we get all the forms of media, television, and radio that we use, which we own this electromagnetic spectrum, by the way, we as the people in the U.S. and, and those folks who, those media mongers use that to deliver us what they deliver us, as I say in one of my poems about t television. I love TV, but TV don't love me. It takes me to my lowest degree. The power of the spectrum used for gain. Main agenda, the Pandora of pain. And selling the unusable to the gullible via brain strokes. It's automatic. It's automatic. The energy works that way, folks. The energy works that way. Now, there's some of you out there probably listening to me now. I'm going to ask you to digress and do a little test. I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to sing a song and get to the end, and I want you to fill in the blank and let you know how electromagnetic spectrum works. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story about a man named Jed. Poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was hunting for some food. Up from the ground came a bubbling. Yeah, how many of you could feel in crude? Because it's automatic. It's in there. The way that he, he speaks and the truth that I hear. And it's in the same tradition, this spoken word of the best sacred poetry that I've experienced or heard and what makes it that way is the honesty of it the directness of it and the fact that it doesn't come from here that it comes from the heart remember what my daughter said too she never forget she said daddy poetry po poetry is a tough way to make a living in america even maya angelou got a job so it remains quite a challenge which is why i call it tap dancing on a razor blade and sometimes I do it barefoot. The Mother Earth introduced me to him. He was dancing in a field at Glen Ivy and uh, doing these beautiful Tai Chi movements. I, having a similar background, came up to him silently and watched. And then uh, I proceeded to do my form for him. And there was this connection, immediate connection of spirit moving from one container into the other. From brother to brother. And the rest, as they say, is history. And uh, in, from this point forward, the rest is mystery. For me, the message is always in the music. The other piece besides the music piece is books. Black Elk Speaks, bringing in the people, uh, the native people, the first people of this land, great knowledge. 500 nations at the time when the Western Europeans showed up on this land, there were 500 nations of people living in harmony and war and peace for generations, thousands of years. And then he with the forked tongue showed up and it's never been the same. The wonderful way in which Anthony's dream is unfolding. The wonderful mystery of how it is unfolding into a manifest reality for humanity today. This is the book that changed my life of water and the spirit, ritual, magic, and initiation in the life of an African shaman. The autobiography of Maladoma Patrice Somme. His dream, making that movie to do of water and spirit, to do a project that represents 
a life-changing experience in his life already just from having read the text and to commit himself for the last 10 years towards seeking a culmination of this project and birthing something that when it's done is going to be something that speaks to all people in general about once again the movement of spirit in a person's life and the willingness to leave everything behind in order to pursue that higher path and that higher place. That this project, Initiation, which Anthony embodies, as does his mentor, Maladoma Same, is a gift to the world. We are storytellers by nature, and the stories that connect us to the earth and spirit are the most important stories that need to be told today. And I honor, love, and respect this brother for having the audacity to step forward in a time of chaos and confusion, to bring light and love into this world. I couldn't believe that I was reading a story about an African tradition of you know, literally generations, a thousand years old, still intact. And yet here was a man who had that initiation, as I say, in a medicine bag on his left side, unbroken tradition, speaking to all that love of nature and the indigenous wisdom. And a laptop in his other hand representing three master's degrees and two PhDs, one from Brandeis and one from the Sorbonne. And for me, his ability to merge both of those and to show the power of those is, was nothing less than phenomenal. And it was a true story. And you read what these quote-unquote primitive Africans do in their initiations and their ritual, specifically the boy to manhood initiation, which has never been detailed ever before. They know about teleportation and time travel and fiber optic translucent wire. So Maladoma, whose name means to be friends with the stranger and the enemy. And I love telling the story of how he got his name for those Americans like myself who are doubting Thomas's in need proof. In the eighth month of pregnancy, it is a tradition in his village for the pregnant woman to come see me, the shaman to come see him, to come see his grandfather, Bakke, at that time in the story. Bakke puts the woman into a trance, speaks to the spirit of the unborn, the spirit yet to enter the world, and asks it three questions. First one, why are you returning? Question of reincarnation, not even an issue. Why are you returning? Are you coming male or female? And is there anything we can do to prepare for your arrival. And it is the answer to those three questions that help determine your name, which embodies your purpose for being. And I often imagine what it would be like for us to have a purpose in our name from the time we were shorties all the way up. Jacob, he who would tell stories, he with the eye, tell the story and you support it like that throughout your whole life and you never get asked that ultimate American question well, what you gonna be when you grow up implication for me it damn does it mean I'm nothing now you yeah, what you gonna be as opposed to the indigenous approach what gifts do you bring you show up if you're breathing, living, representation of your ancestors, you have a gift. You have a reason for being. And it is up for us to create a space to allow that to flourish, to grow. And God forbid we actually pull some water on it ourselves or be supportive of that natural automatic gift that you have. As Maladoma said, this is the job you cannot be fired from. That passion that burns inside each and every one 
of us. And he talks about that. Anthony Neal Johnson is the CEO of Santa Barbara Filmworks and the reception tonight is for the film to be made called Initiation, which is based on the autobiography of Maladoma Patrice Somme from his book of Water and of Spirit. And uh, Maladoma is from Burkina Faso and um, who went on, a man that went on an incredible, incredible journey and we're really excited that um, this uh, his story is now going to be told. And Anthony um, is a communications and media consultant that um, for the last 25 years has been the creative uh, in management with a lot of experience um, in television, film, and print media. And he also won an award, uh, a silver medal, with um, the New York International Television and Film Festival. And he's done work with um, as a, a director of production and operations for Black Entertainment Television. And we're really happy he's here tonight. We're real excited and we can't wait to hear him speak and be the voice of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's an honor and we congratulate you and welcome you and we love you. Another name for Anthony is, um, and I'll chant it, um, mm tuaswa, mm tuaswa, mm tuaswa. Thank you. So first thing I want to do is uh, do the first things first. Today is all about gratitude, so I have an invitation. My invitation is for you to close your eyes because what we want to give thanks for is that which we cannot see. If there's anything I know about everybody in this room is that you had a mother and a father. And that they had a mother and a father. And they had a mother and a father. And a mother and a father and a mother and a father as far back as we can go. So we want to say thanks and honor to the ancestors. This is the book that I've had since 1995, when I had the pleasure of hearing him speak at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., no less. And I was in my one of my I hate white folks modes, don't y'all get upset. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, I was fly boy in the buttermilk, and I don't want to hear that African, I don't want to look. So I listened to her and brother speak fabulous speech, but what I never forget about that evening, in the midst of all the philosophical shamanic discussions and they were talking, a little blonde girl about 10 years old raised her hand and she said, could you talk about the initiation please? <laughs> I will never forget that. So two days later, I'm walking through Borders Bookstore and the book jumped off the shelf and I haven't let it go since. Indigenous peoples all across the world, throughout time, honor the process of initiation, of becoming a woman, of becoming a man. Uh, where I come from, Mississippi and Chicago, D.C. and now California, we don't do it that way. We say, hey, here a driver's license once, say, hey, you're a man, <laughs> drink a couple brews, come on down. Take so. So th there's a trade-off about that, what it means to be initiated, to understand what's going on in the world. Whew, I'm sitting in LA at an Italian restaurant. Been running around for three years with this book and with quotes from Robert Bly saying this is the greatest autobiography I've ever written. And Alice Walker saying this, this is what they say, because Johnson will tell you anything. Alice Walker say, quote, this is the shimmering missing piece of the story of the earth. And I'm knocking on every Hollywood door I can say, don't y'all get this, don't y'all get this. Took me three years to learn three words. Where's the script? No, even before money. Where's the script? I'm saying, no, that's, hey, that's, what, that's what I said. Ain't you gonna give me some money so we can write the script? Get the book? What you mean? Look what Alice Walker said, Robert Bly, uh, Michael Mead, and Haki Balabuli, and then who wrong with the wolf woman? What's her name, Clarissa? Yeah! <laughs> It took me three years to learn three words. And I'm, so I'm sitting in this restaurant in LA, kind of, you know, and I look over to the bar, and there is one of the most elegant gentlemen I've ever met, whose voice now comes inside of me. And he speaks like this, and he always has. He is the epitome of the word erudite. If you'd ever want to meet him, you would not. You know exactly what I'm referring to. So he's sitting there having a cocktail, and I'm staring at him because I'm a fan. This young waiter comes up to me and says, you want to meet him, don't you? And I say, yeah, can't you tell? <laughs> so he 
says, come on, I know him. I think he would enjoy meeting you as well. So he escorts me over and he says, uh, Mr. Brown, talk about Roscoe Lee Brown himself. I sit there with Roscoe Lee Brown, who, for many of you who don't know, is an African-American actor of renown. Has done hundreds of movies, and is this one of the most fabulous characters you've ever want to meet? So I'm sitting there in awe with Mr. Brown. We're drinking a cognac, and I'm in pigs. I'm in big heaven. <laughs> and he turned to me and said something that changed my life. He said, you know, Johnson, you know, Johnson, I've only known you a short time now. But I'll tell you one thing. You're as smart as any of these assholes in Hollywood. Write the damn script yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and he froze me. And that's what I did. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I alluded earlier to the fact that we have uh, been blessed mm. you know, to find a director. Because when I first came, I'm going to talk about it now. When I first came to Hollywood, when I started knocking on doors and stuff like that, and, and I met LeVar Burton. Now, shit, I'm in, I'm, y'all, you know, this, well, for me, you know, as an African American guy, we have certain things, and you have life, we have certain big moves and things. And y'all may remember Roots. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, when I first read this book, and I live in D.C., I was living in D.C., and we drive every, big thing is to drive to ocean, to the ocean for the weekend. To the ocean for the weekend. And I took this book with me to the ocean. And the person I was with at that time still reminds me, I was just not available for the whole weekend. Because I'm picking up and I'm reading something, I'm reading about Africans, and it's like I'm reading about Star Trek. Things that I had already always known in my bones about the wisdom <coughs> that exists there. And I challenge you as an American, as a Western thinking, good old American like me, <coughs> to check it out. It will blow your mind. It will blow your mind. So I want to ask our director, and actor, and my partner, and vision holder, LeVar Burton, if he would step up and honor us with whatever is on his heart. So. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Now I feel the spirit yeah. in this room. Anthony. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. And the people in this room love you. Yeah. Oh, right. This magical place, Santa Barbara, has embraced. And you have given back to this community, as evidenced by your friends and those who have supported you on your long journey with this thing. They are here to celebrate with you and offer gratitude. It's no small thing. I want you to take that in. <laughs> Anthony is too polite to share the part of the story with you, but I will. <laughs> when Anthony came to see me at Paramount, it wasn't that meeting of the minds that he talked about with Howard Besseman. It wasn't like all grits and gravy. <laughs> Was it? No. No. <laughs> we had to grow into our love and respect for one another. And so we have. Mm. And so we have. Mm. This thing that mm. he has walked around with, as he said, and held on to and put in the faces of so many so persistently on behalf of all of us for so long is about to be born. It is a gestation process that has lasted years. I know of no woman who could carry <laughs> the baby to full term this long. And I know some strong women 
But this man has done that. Yeah. He has carried it and carried it and carried it until it was ready to be born. The thing about grace is that we all have an opportunity to participate in it. Maladoma's story, his journey to fulfill his own destiny is our own common story. His story calls to us the need and necessity to fulfill our own personal destiny paths. No matter what that is, where is Bryce? There he is, Bryce. Would you step forward? Me, my new friend Bryce. Give him some love. I don't mean to embarrass you, Bryce, but I just wanted to call you forth as a, as a representation of the truth that we all have a destiny to fulfill. And we are all on that path. <laughs> now, I'm not going to put you on the spot because you probably haven't given all that much thought to what your destiny is. But I'm here to tell you it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So tonight is our common celebration. It is an opportunity to gather together and to give thanks and gratitude for that which we all share in common. The support of those whom we love and have faith in and that faith and love coming back to us in equal and oftentimes in greater measure and how that energy augments in and of itself and by itself and on and on and on. And the grace is that which we are the benefactors of. We have the opportunity to walk, to live, to breathe in and among that graceful spirit that is us, doing us with each other. My brother Anthony walks that every darn day of his life. His life is a graceful, grace-filled walk. And I'm proud of you. I'm proud. I have seen you grow mm. <laughs> and you have forced me to grow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we do for one another. That's what, we do. That's what we do. That's what we do. It's who we are to one another. And so give thanks. It's all good. Was it a weekend? Was it a weekend? No. Just like right now. It was a strong beginning. Folks came and brought their shadows and found some gold. Look around. What a sight to behold. Tall, short, fat, white, black, and beige. Let's make spirit happy. Burn a little sage. I may even laugh and cry in the face of my truth told through eyes different from mine. But we're in a container created by wisdom. Yeah. Now me, I'm too sinister to be a minister. I ate too much ham to be an imam. And I'm too full of yeast to be a priest. Too frail to find that holy grail. And I, unlike Maladoma, I didn't go to school long enough to be called a doc. But every now and then, I can feel it. I didn't go to school long enough to be called a doc, but every now and then I can feel it, that space. You feel that there's a space between the tick and the top. Mm -hmm. Between the tick and the top. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.
I love each and every one of you. Thank you again for coming. Yeah. Straight ahead. Yeah.